Hello, 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 hello. Trying something new today. We got the wide angle. Good morning. I am John Beckman, Professor John Beckman, Dr. John Beckman, U.S. Senate GOP primary candidate in the state of Alabama. Vote for me March 3rd. Woo! Okay. Today we are going to talk about mutually exclusive ideas of the Democrats, how they can never say no as long as you're crying. But first, I'm super tired today, so I need coffee. Everybody, everybody who's coming in, get coffee in your cup. Mm, let's do a citation to the simultaneous libation of Scott Adams. Cheers. Ah, I got my wife's cappuccino. Okay. So, let's just talk about the, some of the, I'll, I'll outline a list of some of the mutually exclusive ideas. That mutually exclusive means you can't have it both ways. You either get one or the other. And I'm just going to kind of outline a list of all the things that are mutually exclusive that the Democrats want that I gleaned from the debates, but yet it's impossible to have both. You can either have this or that. So I'm just going to talk about that concept. And then at the end, I'll talk a little bit about my final perception about the debates. Um, the first thing was, they tell you that corporations are bad. Corporations are evil. So that was the quote from Warren is, corporations hate America. They're not patriotic. If they can just make five cents, they'll leave the country. Corporations are evil. And then the opposite of that was Joe Biden, who was saying, I bailed out the corporations, the General Motors corporations, the car companies in Detroit. So you should vote for me because I kept your job. So in one sense, they're saying, they're saying corporations are evil. They do nothing for you. They hate you. And then in the other sense, they're saying corporations are actually pretty good. They give you jobs, they keep your communities, they uplift your communities, and that's why we bail them out. So they're saying two completely opposite things. I have no idea how to interpret what they're saying. Second thing, they all want open borders, but high wages. That is impossible because if you set a minimum wage – to say $20 an hour, say you want to raise the wage of everybody who works in America, you set the minimum wage to $20. Immediately what happens is illegal immigrants come in and that employer is going to say, well, do I want to hire the person and pay them minimum wage $20 to do a very, very low skill job or would I rather hire the illegal immigrant and pay them $5 to $10 an hour? Which one are they going to hire? They're going to hire the illegal immigrant. So you cannot have high minimum wage and open borders. It's impossible. You either close the border and then you raise the minimum wage to allow for unionization of workers, which I don't support, but I'm saying you can either do that or you open the borders and you accept the fact that there's going to be lower wages because opening the borders and allowing low skilled immigrants to come freely flowing across the border is going to lower the average wage of the average American citizen. That's a fact. So I'm pointing out to you that the Democrats want open borders and they also want high wages and yet these things are mutually exclusive. It's impossible. You can't have both. Okay. Another thing, Beta O'Rourke and Governor Inslee say you're going to be dead in 10 years from global warming, climate change. Our planet is already destroyed. It's already too late. Yang said you need to run to the hills. Run to the hills. Have you heard that song? You need to run to the hills. So we're going to be dead in 10 years, and yet, yet, they want to give us all efficient health care. Kamala Harris's plan won't actually even, her health care plan will not even be implemented for 10 years. So on one side, they're saying, well, we're all going to be dead in 10 years from climate change, and it's too late. And then on the other side, they're saying, well, let's make these health care plans that in 10 years will give us health care. And it's like, if we're going to be dead, why do we, why do we care about health care plans? So those are mutually exclusive ideas. We're either not going to be dead in 10 years and we will need health care or we're either going to be dead in 10 years and we'll be in the ground so we won't need health care. Um, okay, here's another one. They hate Russians. They think the Russians are like our biggest enemy and yet they want no fracking no gas production, no fossil fuels. So let me tell you why this is mutually exclusive. So the entire Russian economy, the entire Russian state is basically like an oil monopoly, okay? And if you really don't like Russians, the best thing you can do 
to punish the Russians is you can allow fracking, gas production, and fossil fuel production in the United States because that forces them to lower their prices of their gas that they produce because we're competing with them and it makes them make a lot less money and it reduces their power. So if you really, if you really hate Russians and you really want to fight against the Russians and you really think the Russians are screwing with our democracy and you really want to get back at them, the best thing you do is you allow for gas production and fossil fuel production because that's what kills the Russian economy. But yet they tell you because of global warming, we need no gas, no coal, no fracking. We need to eliminate the use of those energy sources. And yet we also don't like the Russians. So it's like those are mutually exclusive, but it only makes sense for USA to be oil price of $50. I don't know what that would be saying. Okay, so I've outlined about five of these mutually exclusive ideas that the Democrats all are in support of. And the only thing I conclude is that why ignore the fact that Russia, Russia is not hacking our votes. They never hacked any. So this guy says, why ignore the fact that Russia is hacking our votes? Russia never hacked any single voting machine in the entire United States. That did not happen. That's a myth. Russia did not change a single vote. The only thing that Facebook found, let me tell you, the only thing that Facebook found is the, there were some Russian artists Poor Russian artists who spent about $40,000 making bots that made commercials for both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. And the commercials were so bad. The commercials were so bad that they would not have possibly influenced anybody. Not a single vote was swayed by a Russian bot. I saw Russian bots on Twitter. How can you saw? Okay, so let me ask you a question. You saw Russian bots on Twitter. You saw Russian bots on Periscope. How do you know those are Russian bots? How do you know those were programmed by somebody who knows Russia, Russian in the United States? How do you know that those weren't programmed by Chinese? How do you know that those weren't programmed by Iranians? How do you know that those are Russians? Those are just bots that come on and they post Russian messages. Yeah, I see that on my Periscopes all the time. People, there's bots, there are bots that come in and they post this little Russian message. It's just, a, it's just a bot that posts a little Russian language. Like that does not sway anybody's vote. To, to assume that because there's robots that the purpose of the hacking of Facebook stuff was to divide the nation. Yes, I agree with that. We can agree on that. So here's one thing we can all agree on. And actually the United States is also guilty of this. So the United States and all countries do try to influence all elections. Because if you're thinking from Israel's perspective, or if you're thinking from Russia's perspective, or if you're thinking from the Chinese perspective, they all want the best person for them to be to win the United States presidency. So all those countries are trying as hard as they possibly can to, to, to influence. I agree with that. They're trying to influence. But we do that too. If you, if you are so naive to think that the United States does not try to influence elections in Israel, elections in Russia, elections in Ukraine, elections in South America, elections all over the fucking world, then you are the most naive person on the planet. Okay? The, every single, this is a fact of life, every single country is trying to have an impact on every other single country. We are just as bad as Russia. That's what you, no, no. I don't think Russia's evil. I don't think Russia's evil. And I don't think the United States is evil. Like this is a, this is a dichotomy that I refuse to believe in. I do not think that the people of Russia are evil people who just think of like how to just like, how can, how, how can they fuck over Americans every day? Like they just wake up to just screw over Americans. I do not think that Russians think that. Okay. And I don't think that the average American just wakes up every day and thinks like, how can I just screw over other people? No. The world is not like that. People are not evil people, okay? But I do agree that they, there, there are campaigns trying to influence people. But what I'll tell you is that the Russians had no impact in, they did not hack voting machines. They did not change votes. And on the bots that were cited by the Facebook only created ad videos that helped both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. And if you actually look at those ads on YouTube, they're the worst ads that you've ever seen. Nobody would ever, nobody who ever saw that would ever change their vote. You are naive. No, if, no, I'm not naive. And let me tell you, because I actually look at the quantitation. 
the Russian people that were, that were uh, what do you call it, that the FBI tried to bring over here to prosecute, they spent only $40,000. Do you know how much you get for $40,000 on Facebook? You get nothing. You don't get a single change vote. Do you know how much, do you know how much Trump's campaign spent on Facebook ads? Almost a billion dollars, okay? You get nothing for $40,000. I don't want communism either. This is totally off topic. The whole video started with mutually exclusive ideas of, of Democrats. Now, let me just tell you that, going back to that. The only way you get mutual exclusion is by the inability to say no. And let me explain that. So here's what happens. This, you, can, you can study this mechanism of democratic thinking. This is, this is how it happens. Somebody comes to the Democrats and as long as they're crying when they ask for something, the Democrats cannot say no. So if somebody's crying, they ask for something, they say, oh, we want higher wages. And then they say, okay, we'll give you higher wages. And then somebody says, we want to come into the, we want to come into America. And then they say, okay, you can come in illegally. And they don't realize, they say yes to all these things, and they don't realize that if you let people come in illegally, that actually lowers the wages that you just said you were going to increase. So the entire thinking of every single Democrat is, I cannot say no. I cannot say no. If, as long as somebody's crying, I can't say no. So... This, the problem with that is that this system is very easy to manipulate. And you know this if you've ever studied children or had children or looked at child psychology. Children are the best manipulators of their parents. They have, they have toned and tuned their brain to be able to behave in ways that get what they want. And the Democrat Party is exactly like that. If you are a crying child, the Democrats tell you you get what you want. Okay, That's the worst form of thinking. It's not long term. They have they 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 advocate these mutually exclusive ideas that both cannot work at the same time, and they just tell people what they want to hear. Okay, so now let's go back. Let's talk a little bit more about the debate. The same applies for Republicans, except that greed. No, and you don't agree with that because so he's saying the same applies for Republicans. They just tell you what you want to hear, except you insert greed instead of crying. That's not true because remember what the Democrats said about the Dem about the Republicans. They said the Republicans are the party of no. At least the Republicans know how to fucking say no when somebody asks for something that's ridiculously stupid. Okay, so that is not true. Let's all do a sip together. Let's raise our cups. And let's do a sip together. They can't say no to the. Pre it's because we all agree with the president. We agree. I agree with President Trump. Okay, now let's talk about the, so let's talk about the, the 2016 Trump primary and let's contrast that with this Democratic primary. Is that why your hat has the emblem of, Alabama flag is the emblem of losers? Dude, this guy's about to get blocked. This guy's about to get blocked for just, just saying bad things about the great state of Alabama. Okay, so in the 2016 primary, when Trump ran, you could, you could do that same primary over and over and over and over again. And Trump would win that primary in that packed field nine out of 10 times because Trump was like the elephant in the room. Trump had so much persuasiveness, so much energy that you could rerun that simulation over and over and over and over and over. And you would always 90% of the time get the same outcome. You would, Trump would always win that election if you just reran that. Now, I'm trying to think about this Democrat election. I'm trying to think about who's going to win the primary. Who's actually going to win? Is it possible to make a prediction? As of now, I don't think anybody could accurately make a prediction. And here's why. is If you were to, right now, this field, there's no strong outlier. And I actually think Democrats would agree with this. In the Democratic field, there is not a strong outlier who, you, who everybody is unanimously drawn to. There's a bunch of weaker, kind of like second tier candidates. And all these second tier candidates are kind of like fighting for the biggest coalition of crazy people, okay, to sort of boost their energy. So if you were to rerun this Democrat election primary simulation over and over and over and over again, I suspect that you'd get a whole bunch of different outcomes. Maybe in 20% of the time, Warren would win. And in 20% of the time, Kamala would win. And in 5% of the time, Tulsi would win. And in 20% of the time, Biden would win. So it's like there isn't like a strong outlier, which, which is – so it's very, very, very difficult to predict what's going to happen. 
Okay, because there isn't a strong outlier. There isn't a strong force in this party right now. I'll say so, but I will end with some predictions. Um, so, and this is just from, this is just hard to start blocking people when you struggle. So I'm going to, I'll talk about what this guy said. And I'll, I'll, I'll actually, I'll actually read your quote. So he said, why are you starting to block people when you only have six viewers? So this is a misinterpretation. These are live, everybody who's watching this video right now, you are a live viewer. But then this view, this this video gets uploaded to my Twitter page, okay, and it sits there for the whole day. And people come to my Twitter page, and then they look at my video, okay, over the day. So over the day, I accumulate about a hundred a hundred viewers, and it's usually my average. And I'm working to increase that. But I'm totally confident that every time you post a video, a hundred people watching it, that's pretty good. And if you've ever actually tried to make live videos, like it's actually super difficult. So this douchebag who is trying to like trying to make me feel like not like I'm not self-confident because I have only have eight people in the room right now. Like that guy's just a moron. This video, I'm making it for a few reasons. One, I'm making it for myself because it helps me articulate what I believe in. It helps me become a lot smarter because when you're forced to articulate the words and things that you believe, you become a lot smarter so that the next time somebody asks me a question, I got that shit in my brain. It's wired. I got it. Second thing is I make these videos because they're archived. I post them on my Twitter, I post them on my YouTube. So when people miss my morning videos, they can come and they can watch them later, okay? So by criticizing me by saying there's only six people in the room, you're not see your brain is not functioning properly because you're not seeing the bigger picture. So just stop that shit. I won't block you, but just stop that shit. If you piss me off more, I will block you. Okay, so I'll finalize by saying Yang, Yank, that's called repeating what you know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that means. It looks like I triggered him. I'm smiling. I'm laughing. I think it was a good comment because it actually. It act, yeah, he's bothered. I'm not bothered. I'm. I'm happy you guys are here. Look at. Look at you guys. I'm actually interacting with you guys, and you guys are actually watching my video. So there's something about me that's drawing you here. You are bro. I don't know what that means. Okay. The other thing about the Democratic Party is the Democrat Party is not anymore a party for men. The Democrats hate men, especially white men. So it's really, really hard for me to envision a scenario where a Cory Booker, even though he's not white, he's still a man. It's very, very hard for me to envision a scenario where Cory Booker wins. It's also very hard for me to envision a scenario where Biden wins. And it's also very difficult for me to envision a scenario where Yang wins. What about Beto? I don't think Beto has a shot. I think the only people who have a chance to win in this primary are women. I think the top heavy hitters right now that are most likely to win is, I think right now I would put, if I were forced, if I was forced to choose who I think is going to win, I think Warren's going to win. Democrats include everyone. Republicans don't. That's just not true. Democrats include people who believe with their ideas and Republicans believe people who believe and agree with their ideas. It's about thinking. It's not about exclusion. It's about do you agree with what these people think? And if you do agree with them, you're in the party. So here's what I'll predict. Yang can't possibly win in this party. Yang is going to be dropping out here in a while. He's not going to gain any more momentum. Why well, talk? About more than 1,000 documented lies by Trump. Do you like... No, I am i don't like Roy Moore. I'm running against Roy Moore. So I'm actually primarying against Roy Moore because Roy Moore is one of the worst people in the world. None can match Trump's charisma and original thought. That is true. Trump has charisma. That's why Trump had the highest ranked television show in the United States. People who say that Trump has no charisma are morons. Trump was the leading actor in the, his reality TV show for like 10 seasons in a row in the top show in the United States. That is a person with charisma. And people just, if the Democrats just keep ignoring that, that is why they will continually continue to lose. Okay? So here's my predictions. Yang is going to drop out eventually. He might not drop out for the next two to three months, but he will eventually be out. People love to watch train wrecks. What, who's the train wreck? But I agree with that. People do love to watch train wrecks, which is why I'm hoping Elizabeth Warren gets wins, gets wins, excuse me, wins the election because I would love to see the train wreck of Elizabeth Warren running against Trump. Um, so here's my prediction. Yang's going to drop out eventually. He can't win. 
Warren, Booker, Biden, Kamala, and Sanders will be in the top five. I think those are the top five strongest candidates. Warren, Booker, Biden, Kamala, Sanders. I think those people are going to be in the final debates. As of who wins, I can't, I can't, I have no idea. But it's very, very difficult to me, for me to imagine a scenario where a man wins in the Democratic Party. I think the only chance is Warren or Kamala. And I think in that, in that fight between Warren and Kamala, I think that Warren has the upper edge because I think Warren is seen as a little bit tougher. Um, and I think that Warren, she's a little bit easier to understand when she talks. You can understand what she's saying. Whether or not you agree with her or not, it doesn't matter. You can at least understand her. When Kamala talks, you don't understand her as well. She's not as good of an explainer about what she's talking about. So I'll end it there unless you guys have some final questions. This was a good video. And you can go to, if you like the videos, you can comment, you can share, you can tune in later on my Twitter. Um, you can go to eaglewolfpack.com and you can vote for me in the primary on March 3rd in the U.S. Senate GOP Alabama primary. And...